Hello and welcome back to the channel. An impromptu video here because I wasn't going to do any more content between now and the end of the North London Derby. But I sat down early afternoon today to enjoy some of the Premier League action, to enjoy Manchester City versus Chelsea. Had Manchester United versus Aston Villa on in the background, although I wasn't paying a huge amount of attention of attention to that because the game at Stamford Bridge in the second half at least was incredibly entertaining. Manchester City defeated Chelsea by a goal to nil and you have to say they absolutely deserved it. It was a sublime performance in every way I thought from Pep Guardiola's side. He received a lot of criticism didn't he after the Champions League final. People said that he got the, the system wrong, the decision to play without a defensive midfielder was wrong. The fact that Manchester City don't have a recognised centre forward at the moment is another issue that they're supposedly going to struggle with this season. But we talked about it on the 90 minute gas tank the other day. I talked about how I felt that actually a lot more was made of the fact that City don't play with a conventional striker than actually needs to be. They created the best chances at Stamford Bridge. They played all of the football. And it's a day where football wins because I'm very much a believer in attacking football. I think that's the way the game should be played. I love to see it and I give credit to managers who even in games of this magnitude are very, very brave in the way they set their team out to play. Now, Pep Guardiola's side don't know how to play any other way, granted. But they took the game to Chelsea from the very beginning. They were really bold and brave in the way they pressed Chelsea really, really high up the pitch, knowing that they would have to contend with the pace of Werner and Lukaku if Chelsea could play their way out of the press. They did it very, very rarely, you've got to say. And I thought it was a bit of a negative setup from Thomas Tuchel. Now, Yes, they always play with a back three. They always play with a couple of defensive midfielders. But deep in the second half, when they were a goal down, 20 minutes to go, he was still playing with deep, uh, two deep midfielders, a back three, etc., etc. And I just felt he could have done a little bit more maybe to try and change it and force the issue. But listen, if City were on point with their finishing today, they could have run away with this game. They were that, that good. And no, it doesn't kind of make up for the Champions League final. It's a Premier League fixture right at the start of the season in comparison to that game uh, that took place last May. But, you know, Pep Guardiola, I think, silenced a lot of doubters here today with, with the way he set his team up, with the performance that his team put in. And, and Thomas Tuchel, in my opinion, is very fortunate that it wasn't more because, as I say, I think the two teams were worlds apart. The first half, as I said, was was really dull, really cagey. But Manchester City... We're always the ones trying to play on the front foot. We're always the ones trying to play all of the football. And in the second half, they got an early goal through Gabriel Jesus. Brilliantly taken, by the way. I know it took a deflection on the way into the back of the net. But when the ball comes to him, he shows great instinct and, and, and real sharpness to kind of spin and get the shot off, which ends up in the back of Edouard Mendy's net. So fair play to Gabriel Jesus. He probably feels as though he should have scored again when he had an effort cleared off of the goal line. Jack Grealish had a great chance. Laporte had a good chance uh, from a set piece as well. So City, by far the better team, certainly deserved it. They are still the team to beat in the Premier League for me. And uh, I think on a day where people were questioning whether Pep Guardiola would get it right because of what happened previously against Chelsea, and when people have been questioning City's ability to carve out chances and score goals, due to the lack of a recognised centre forward. I think they silenced a lot of those doubters by going to the other team uh, rated as favourites to win the Premier League this season and putting on a display like that. It was a statement of a performance. And Pep Guardiola, you have to say, got every single thing right today. So fair play to him. Back to the drawing board for Thomas Tuchel. I still think he's a fantastic manager, but... I like to see the positive coaches rewarded. And I'm not saying that Thomas Tuchel is always a negative coach, but I felt the way, not the way Chelsea set up, because you would set up that way against Manchester City. Everybody knows what their strengths are. Everybody knows how good they are. But I would have liked to have seen Thomas Tuchel change it a bit when Chelsea went down a goal, at least for the last 15 minutes or so. Yes, he brought Kai Havertz on, but he still had... Kovacic, Jorginho, he still had the back three. It just felt a little bit uh, negative for me. And I, and I think he probably could have done more to try and influence the game. Elsewhere, Manchester United were beaten at home by Aston Villa by a goal to nil. And Bruno Fernandes missed a late, late penalty and the opportunity to earn Manchester United a point. Now, 
I've got to say, I, I, I never really fancied Manchester United as, as title challengers, but with the signing of Ronaldo, I felt they would at least be closer. I felt they would at least get to a point where they'd be there or thereabouts come the end of the season. And I don't think you could write them off due to the signing of Cristiano Ronaldo and the signing of Rafa Varane and Jadon Sancho in the squad that they already had last season. People talk a lot about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being the part of that puzzle, if you like, that holds them back. Maybe he is. Uh, but I thought that, you know, again, I didn't watch this game properly and we'll probably talk a little bit more about it on the social club this week when we have the opportunity to watch it back in a lot more detail. As I say, I was glued to that second half between uh, Manchester City and Chelsea. But, you know, it just it's one of those results for Manchester United that you look at and you think it's a bit of a disaster, but you're not surprised by it because United over the last couple of seasons have produced performances and results like this far too frequently to be really in the mix for the Premier League title. I know they finished second last season, but they were a long way off of Manchester City. And this was the kind of game where I was looking at this weekend thinking, let's see what Manchester United can do. We know they don't have problems necessarily against some of the bigger sides, that they actually do quite well in those games under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But when it comes to this kind of fixture where teams come to Old Trafford, sit with a low block, we question whether they'd have enough to get over the line. We question whether Cristiano Ronaldo would make that difference. But unfortunately today for them, not for us, for them, he wasn't able to do it. Villa nicked a goal. And uh, although Bruno Fernandes had an opportunity to level things late on, he fluffed his lines and Manchester United have been beaten. They've been knocked out of the Carabao Cup this week by West Ham United. And now they've been beaten by Aston Villa. Claret and blue is probably the two colours that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would love to forget right now. Uh, but that's that's the reality of football. And uh, questions will be asked, of course, of Manchester United now. Make sure you like the video if you haven't done so already. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. It really, really does help. Some non-Arsenal related content for you there. Again, wasn't planning on doing this video, but the football was so gripping. I felt that I needed to get something out. So uh, thank you to everyone for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back very, very soon with more. Until then, take care.